I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I enjoy earning money. Alfie Best, 25-year-old gypsy entrepreneur. One of my greatest achievements, I suppose, was, was recently getting on the, the Sunday Times Under 30s Rich List. That, that, that was massive for me. Coming from a travelling background, he started his journey extremely young. Well, I started when I was 12. When I was in school, I was selling sweets, whatever I could to earn money. And then I come out of school and then I was working on the street. Wow, I've gone to a nightclub, I'm going to do this, I'm going to open the doors and everyone's going to flood in. It doesn't work like that in any which way, shape or form. I made that mistake because the club I am talking about, I then went on to go and buy. And yes, even though his dad is a billionaire, don't get him mistaken. Alfie is putting all the work himself. Keep being mentioned as Alfie Best Son. That is also something that drives me forward. That I want to be my own man. Anybody can say, yeah, okay, he's Alfie Best Son. And there's nobody that can take away what I've done. And you know what? I've never, ever mentioned this in another podcast. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the CEO Cast, the number one podcast for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now today, you lot join me on a special, special episode. I am with the one and only, the great Alfie Best. What's happening, brother? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? I'm good, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good. I can't complain. I can't Alfie, complain. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while, man. You know, I've seen you online. I've seen many, many podcasts. And the first time I ever come across you was quite a few moons ago. It was on a program. I can't remember what it was called exactly, but you're buying your M4. Yeah, rich kids go shopping. That's it, rich kids go shopping. So, Alfie, let's dive into this, man. But before we get into anything, I just want to kind of touch on this, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen you do quite a few podcasts. You've yeah. done one with my, one of my best friends, Mikey. Yeah. Um, and usually people come on podcasts to either promote a service or promote like a brand, almost like PR runs. But I don't get that vibe from you at all, that you're not out here to promote anything really. So what is the message that you want to leave out for the you, for the people who watch your podcasts? And why is it that you do these podcasts? First of all, to promote myself, I am the brand. Mm. So whatever I do from my platforms, I hope to gain a following. And then from there, I can promote whatever I'm doing. Yeah. I like to uh, uh, share my story if I can help anybody, the mistakes that I've made during my life. I like to uh, uh, put them forward and maybe it might be able. Because I'm one of these people, I like to see people succeed. And if I can help, I will, because like I say, I've been that person who's struggling, looking for help. Still today, sometimes I need help. Everybody does. So what does it mean to you to help other people? Obviously, it makes you feel good about yourself, I suppose. There's not really much more to it. You know, I'm not looking for no financial gain out of doing it. I'm literally looking to do it. And then if they do succeed with the advice that I've given them, I can look back and say, well... It paid off, didn't it? Yeah, of course, of course. So talk to me some through the accolades and achievements you've had in your life. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. Um, To be honest with you, one of my greatest achievements, I suppose, was, was recently like getting on the, the Sunday Times under 30s rich list. That, that, that was massive for me. Yeah. What's the criteria um, you got to have to be under that rich list? 10 million. 10 million? Yeah, okay, they've got six. a value at 10 million. Um, that, that was a massive achievement, obviously. You know, that, 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 that made my head swell a little bit, I suppose. I was, when I was 16, I owned a nightclub. That was great. And that, that, that was more of a lesson than an achievement. It felt great at the time, but it was actually not... not, not it, it worked out in the end. I made it a success, but it was... It was the, the lessons I took was, was worth more than the money, than the to money, be honest. Yeah. Um, and when I was 17 or... 17, I bought my first mobile home park. Yeah, that's in the same video as the M4 collection. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I bought my first mobile home park and that, that's that's my achievements. And apart from that, you know, as a kid, boxing, I love boxing. You know, that feeling-wise, that would probably be my best sense of achievement whenever I've won a boxing fight, more so than out, outside of business. Yeah, so Alfie, everyone almost, you know, everyone knows about Alfie Best's name. Yeah, whether it's yourself or whether it's your dad, everyone knows about Alfie Best. Billionaire name, name, billionaire status, or the status that you guys hold, like your your name holds weight, right? Did it always hold weight as you were growing up? Because everyone can look at the articles right now and say Al Alfred Best Senior, billionaire, Alfred Best Junior, rich list, right? Did your name always hold that weight when you were growing up? What was your whole upbringing like? Perfectly normal. Yeah, it was. It was. It was relatively normal. It's always been based around work and 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 business. And now, obviously, we haven't been in the position that we are today. We're always looking to grow and and push further forward. That that goes for me, and and my dad would obviously tell you the same. That's what we strive towards. Yeah, you know, I I, I live. I I enjoy success. It's like like a drug to me. So within your community, when you were growing up, had you guys always been billionaires? No, of course not. No. 
So when you upgrade, let's just say you like in your teenage years, mm -hmm. what was like your financial situation then? Personally? Personally, yeah. Me personally, no, I, it wasn't until I got to, I was always working, always always working, doing whatever I could to earn money. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I got probably 16, 17, I bought my first mobile home park. Like, you know, some people they'd say, ah, oh, but uh, um, like without being big headed or anything, like, you know, I, I had an M4 when I was 17, you know, like what, 100,000 pound, it didn't cost that much, but that's that's where I'd have been or there or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cause the way I see it is like this, you know, I saw that video of you picking up your M4. That was when you were how old? 17, right? 17, yeah. 17, I'm 25 now, and I've only just got that car of almost like an achievement, just mm -hmm. itch it off, you know, sort of thing. So, you know, you were miles ahead of me in that sense at 17 years old. And eight years later, I've just only got the same car now. Do you know what I mean? So I look at it like, wow, that's an how, achievement. How, how old was you when you started? Well, the podcast. No, started whatever you do for oh, work um, or, or, or saving or trying to invest money or <sighs> doing whatever you do. I'll be real, not not that long, not that long. Like, uh, I started working retail and whatnot when I was about 17 um, and started taking work serious probably when I was like 22. Well, I started when I was 12. Yeah, big now, difference. When, yeah. I was, when I was in school, I was selling sweets and, and, and drinks, cold drinks, whatever I, whatever I could to earn money. Yeah. And then I come out of school and then I was working on the street, uh, buying and selling floor mats, industrial equipment, toilet paper, blue paper towels to anywhere that I could uh, when I was 14 and I've done numerous businesses then and in between. So you come from the traveling background right? That's Is correct. that quite common to you know come out of school early and always you know try to hustle whether it's you know selling for example sweets or you know trying to make deals on the street here and there is that quite common or is that unheard of? Well it's no I wouldn't say it's unheard of but um I wouldn't say it's unheard of, but it's uncommon for travellers to stay in school. They all do come out very young. That's a completely normal thing. Yeah, and it's a, you know it's a stigma that the media attach with it as well. Like they portray that you know travellers come out young, and uh, the but hustle. I, d I don't think it's a bad thing. I never learned anything. But realistically, I didn't earn anything in school. Yeah, what has helped me today to be honest with you everything that helps me today is what i've learned and the hard lessons that i've uh, I've, I've learned physically you know out actually doing it that's yeah. how i've learned so what about your dad when you were growing up was he always in the billionaire status no 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 was he but he was obviously an entrepreneur in his journey and whatnot he's been we've been entrepreneurs our whole life and has he always been doing the same thing yes yeah so talk to me then so i want to i'll start off at the caravans yeah the holiday homes yeah um, so that's something your dad originally started, right? And Correct. you got your first one when you were 17. 17. Did you take a page of his book and realise that, okay, this formula's working. Let me get a site myself. This episode is sponsored by Fireway Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK. With over 100 locations, you definitely have a store near you. The founder of Fireway was on the show not too long ago, and you can get a slice of the action by using the discount code CEOcast at fireway.co.uk. Once again, use the discount code CEOcast at fireway.co.uk. Well, it was the, the, the direction he pointed me into, obviously, because it's, it's a, a job that he understands the insides and outsides of. And I was never interested in, in becoming into his business. I always wanted to be my own man still to this day. Mm -hmm. And obviously I took his advice on. He found my first mobile home park and said, right, what money have you got around you? Yeah. Uh, why don't you see if you can go and get a mortgage? And that's exactly what happened. And then I bought the first one leading on from that. I then bought another one. And since then I haven't been able to find any more. Oh, so you are you looking for more like? Well, I would. Yeah. I would, but because the property is the way forward, I see things. I think property is, is, for me, now there's other ways to get rich, but for me, I think property is a formula that would work for, for, for anybody. Yeah, that's what we always say, isn't it? Bricks and wall always stay to the end well, of your time, money, your money, your money's safe. Yeah. You know, people investing in crypto nowadays or starting brands or whatever it is, whether it may be Hero or another one, you know, um, bricks and water is always going to be there. People are always going to need places to live and you're always going to need property so you smashed it in that sense then, well listen it? i'm not saying that starting a brand is a bad idea no no of course it's, not, like, no. it's only some make it and get through yeah with property you know where you stand yeah there's other avenues you can go down you can rent it you can airbnb it you can renovate it and sell it on there's there's other th other things you can do and so what i'm trying to do now is just i buy and sell watches 
now mm-hmm. uh, and tickets for events. Yep, see that. I try and uh, I try and save as much money as I possibly can and try and put it into property as and where. If I can renovate it and sell it on for a profit, that's what I'll do. If not, I'll either Airbnb it or I will rent it out. So it's not just the holiday homes that you're looking at in terms of property. It's actual other places as well the, the the mobile home parks is very difficult for me because my dad is still on his own journey yeah. you know as much as he likes to help he is still on his own journey mm-hmm. so and and also there is also some very big fish in that industry um but with property there's a lot more like them them mobile home parks are very very uh, uh, sparse should you say there's not really that many of them what goes into the holiday home parks exactly it's not holiday home. I've got residential, semi-retired and fully retired. Okay. And what do you mean what goes into them? As in, like, what is it exactly? You know, because the way I picture it is something according to, like, a Butlins sort of thing where people go... No, no. A holiday a holiday site, yes. My dad has got several holiday sites. I haven't got any. Mine's residential, so you okay. actually go there to live. Yeah. So when you're looking to retire or, or you're just doing a part-time job... My, my sites, you've got to be 50 and over. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because that's the site rules and regulations. Like, I have site rules. Yeah. Okay, so 50 and over. Mm-hmm. So why? So your dad's got the holiday homes in it and you've got the residential then? No, he's got both. Obviously. He's got both as well. So then what made you want to go down the residential and not holiday homes? There's more money. Yeah. Well, and and they're a lot a lot easier to run. So where did you acquire your wealth to get the, the residential park then? Right, so... Let's talk this uh, in, in like timeline sense. Yeah, no you, problem. You know. So when I was... 12, I was in school buying and selling sweets. And I used to go and get sometimes up to £100 a day. Yeah. in school I never Same had no sense. overheads whatsoever whatever I was earning I was looking to sell and I managed to find out where the cash and carry was yeah because there were still people in do- and to be honest I wasn't the first person in school doing it I see somebody else doing it and think right what a brilliant idea that is I yeah. can do that do the same thing, yeah. and we was buy- everybody was buying them from the sweet shop because nobody thought beyond that Yeah. and then I went out with, uh, to work with my granddad once and he, he used to do what I started doing when I left school buying uh, um, selling high visibility vests uh, work gloves off the back of his van and I went with him once and I bu- uh, uh, fell on top of a cash and carry I thought right you know this is where obviously the shops are buying their yeah, stuff yeah, from yeah. and it wasn't easy because you had to set up an account etc but I ended up falling on one that was happy to work with me because I wasn't buying mass quantities Yeah. you know I only wanted to buy a box or two boxes you got to imagine I'm not a shop yeah yeah, yeah. so you right? feel the I demand for your school for the e- rest e- of the students e- 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 exactly so um so then I managed to get into the cash and carry. And like I say, like look, looking into it, um, if you look behind things, like selling it is, is okay. That's half the job. If you start doing your research, then you can do better again. Because mm-hmm. all I've done was, you could say that I expanded my margin, but I didn't because I just undercut everybody else. Yeah. Which worked for me. Yeah. But you were getting a cheaper as well, so you can't Exa- ex- ex- exactly. Else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was selling them for what the shops were selling them for. So then the rest of the kids in school and stuff, were well, they now coming to you because they're realising, oh, we can get it cheaper from they, Alfie? They, they was coming to me. To be honest with you, we're talking about 10 or 15 pence. It wasn't the world of difference, but, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, um, listen, 10 or 15 pence is 10 or 15 Still pence. Top, exactly. Yeah. Um, I say that, it could even be 50 pence. It was a long time ago now. But I come out of, um, I come out of school and I bought a van. Right, because I wanted to start going cold calling, uh, buying and selling high visibility vests, floor paint, uh, blue paper towel, toilet roll, just going round whether it may be off licenses, industrial estates, offices, and it, it learnt me a hell of a lot. It wasn't easy. It was far from easy, you know. That you you had to handle a lot of rejection, and to handle that young, it wasn't very nice. Mm-hmm. To be honest, how old were you at the time then? Um, fourteen. I was okay. fourteen when I yeah. bought my first van, and then. During this time, they said that that's uh, during this time, I thought to myself, right, I've got a van here that's depreciating in value, you know. Um, so then what I ended up doing was I ended up selling that van and buying a new one, which got me into buying and selling vans. Okay. Because then I went to the auction and realised, right, this ain't a bad job either. So the van I was using, I was putting up for sale. Yep, making money on that. Making money on that, getting another one. Yep. Then before I knew it, I had two vans, so I could use one, sell one, or if I sold one, I could use the other one. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then from then, I started doing travellers' events, yep. which this is what made me, to be honest. Um, when you say made you, made you in terms of money wise, financially. Okay, money wise, okay, yeah. yeah. What about but, well, well, it was, it was, I was on the right path at this stage. Like I was starting to get bigger numbers, yeah, uh, money wise. Um, so what happened was, I 
was doing travelers events and travelers events are not easy they're actually quite for me they was easy to promote and to get people there but finding the venue was extremely difficult if you found the venue it was relatively easy to fill it for me so what was it almost like traveling in events and parties for your community sort yes of thing. okay cool yeah. yeah and i'd done a couple uh in a few uh the first one i ever done was actually in a, in a golf course in bracknell and that didn't do too good but again i learned learned my lesson and it was uh um it was all right. i think i actually made a loss I don't think I made any money, mm. uh, but I still carried on, found another venue, and I fell on top of a club that was failing. Yeah. So I sat him down. You got to remember, I'm still very, very young at this stage, and I'd have been fifteen or, or, or fifteen or sixteen. I sat down with the owner and said to him, "Right, I can fill this club. Like you're obviously not doing no good on the, you know, every weekend or whenever, because only clubs up the West End really are." okay all through the week and even today I don't think that yeah, they're all same popping like that, off you know yeah. back then it was yeah. like Monday to Sunday you know you open the doors in the West End that they was going to flood in any area is weekends course, yeah, um, and it's far from easy and I um, I sat him down and said right, I can put travellers events on and nobody really wanted to touch travellers events because it would tarnish the reputation of the venue yeah like after that like the venue <sighs> Not many people would go to it after that. You know, if it had the traveller attached, uh, the, the 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 traveller reputation that travellers are going there attached to it, then a lot of the uh, I don't know if you call them normal people or non-travellers wouldn't want to go there. And the non-travelling party scene is a lot bigger than the travelling party course, scene. Yeah. And with the traveller parties that I used to do, there had to be an occasion, i.e., Christmas, Valentine's, New Year's. I couldn't just go Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay, you know. so it was never random sort of things. Well, it was random events, but for Valentine's, Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah. like for, I had to have an yeah. occasion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You couldn't, you wouldn't just randomly open up on a on a Wednesday and and call it, you know, have a party there. My like Halloween was uh, very good. So, but it was it was for traveler uh, traveler events. So Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's, they was the days that I would do them. Yeah. And like I say, to find the venue was hard. Um, but once you found the venue, and I did find a venue, mm -hmm. which I could do them regularly. Which also worked uh, um, worked a lot better having a, a regular venue. And, you know, usually even if you did find a venue, you'd only be able to use it once. This venue I found, which was which was regular, um, or I'd done uh, uh, several parties there throughout the year, like all the events, whether it was Christmas, Valentine's, Halloween, uh, uh, New Year's Eve. Um, so break this down for me then. So you found a club mm -hmm. that was a bit dead almost. Mm -hmm. You sat down with the owner. Was this the first time you had met the owner of that club? Come through a friend. Yeah. Okay, so you had your reputation behind you. He didn't know who's, like this, for example, this 15-year-old, 16-year-old boy coming in talking about parties. Do you know what I mean? He knew who he was or? Yeah, he would have known of me through a friend. Okay, so he, he took you serious then uh, at the point as well? Well, for for a job like that, that I don't know whether he took me, I don't know whether he took me serious or not. But what what I was telling him, what I could do, he had to give me a chance. His his, his club was failing anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, so he, he to, never really had nothing to lose. He had to bank on the risk anyway. So and 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 he was a lot older, and he was not in touch clearly with how things was at the time because his club wasn't doing any good. And, and I've said this before: the idea of owning a business sometimes is is way better mm -hmm. than. It actually earning money like you think to yourself wow i've got a nightclub i'm going to do this i'm going to open the doors and everyone's going to flood in it doesn't work like that in any which way shape or form i made that mistake because the club i am talking about i then went on to go and buy and i thought i was just going to open the doors everybody was going to come running in and i was going to earn loads of money well i didn't i hemorrhaged money hand over fist you do not understand the expenses i was having bills chucked at me that i didn't even know about one in particular was a prps license i never forget it which was like a music license to pay music in the venue i looked at it it come in at about three or four grand i thought to myself and i'm 16 at the you time got so you've got to have a music license to pay music in the club well of course well i didn't even know that bit you know, if you walk around a restaurant or something, and times might have changed now, I don't even know what it's called, but it was a red light. I'll never, ever forget it because it stung me. You know, <laughs> it was a um, um, it was a red label. And you, you actually used to stick it on a door or somewhere in the club it used to have to be. Yeah. Um, obviously, because of copyright and things like that, you know, anywhere they could stick a bill on you, they would. Yeah. Regardless to the company or what it was for. Um, and like I say, I just thought I was going to open the doors. And I tried to go down the avenue of the, the, the non-travelling route because I needed 
Friday and Saturday. You only had Friday and Saturday in this venue. Yeah. So you needed to make it work. Yeah. Or, yeah. or unless, you know, you had New Year's Eve or, or the, the odd time you could open up. Yeah. But what we're talking once or twice a year. Here's here's what, what I want to understand to my understanding, yeah? yeah. So you 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 had all these uh, events going on before you owned the club. Yes, Then correct. you purchased the club. And at that point, you decided you want to open up to the masses. Not yes. just travelling community. No, correct. What, with, if travelling community parties were working so well, how come you didn't just stick to that when you had opened up the club and maybe charged a little bit more and obviously you're now charging for drinks and stuff because, like that as well? Because like I was saying, I only had Valentine's Day, Christmas Day wouldn't come every single weekend. Oh, okay, okay. Do you understand where yeah, I'm yeah, coming yeah, from? Yeah, makes sense. So you had to open up to the masses. Exactly. Because like I say, you had Valentine's Day, Christmas, New Year's Eve, Halloween. And it was actually one traveller's party on Halloween, which there's probably people out there that, that, that will remember this, that saved... The whole thing. That, that made it a success, made it a, or, or made it a, a money-making venture. If that night never happened, I would have, I would have hemorrhaged a, a hell of a lot of money. So how long did you have the club for then in ownership? Three months. Three months. Okay, so it was three months where you realised this wasn't for you anymore. How did it all spiral at that point? Well, it wasn't working yeah. at all. Like, So, okay then. So, uh, Halloween was good. Exceptional. Done brilliant. Managed to get all my money back and profit. Mm -hmm. Then I would have had to have waited until Christmas. Christmas would have been the next event the next after event Halloween. After that, yeah. So, I would have had to have waited two months, paying bills, rent, rates, and then after January is slow because the only thing you got then is New Year's. Then the whole of January there's nothing. Then you got Valentine's Day, and then after that I can't even think of us well, after that. I actually, and do you know what? I've never ever mentioned this in 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 another podcast. After I after I, I actually sold the club. Yeah. After I sold it, I then went and took on another club. Oh, did you? In Romford, yeah. which was called Hush. Hush. Where in Romford is that? Right. Romford's around the corner for me. Right. Um, is it near the brewery side or or? No, it's, it's out the back. Okay. I'm trying to think. It was called. It was called Hush. If I took you to Romford, I'd be able to show you exactly where yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Again, failing venue. Yeah. And I took it on for the Christmas and New Year period. Yep. And once again, made a success, but just for them two parties. So obviously, my niche was travellers' events. Yeah. And nothing else seemed to work for me. And I did also try promoting normal parties, which. Uh, um, which never really worked out too well for me. Why do you think it didn't work out? Why do you think you couldn't get the doors open to the masses and have the masses come in? What was it behind it now that you look back at it and you reflect on it? Is there anything in particular or... I was very young at the time. You know, now I think I'd do a lot better. I know a lot more people. Yeah. I think I'd attract a lot more people. Back then I was 16 years old. Like, yeah. you know, I, so I suppose it wouldn't have been cool going to a 16-year-old's event. Yeah, okay, The difference sense. with travellers is... They've just got to go wherever they're invited. Yeah. They haven't really got much of a choice, especially yeah. all together. You see, like, because Mikey told me, and I was listening to your podcast with him last night as well. You know, he told me at the time as well when he had um, like a travellers party, it was about 150 people or so. Mm. And he calls it all amazing, right? Um, but with, with it, usually, is it always like that? Or, you know, because as he said in the podcast, not a lot of restaurants wanted to take that party on, for example. What's the reason behind that? Well, they can go wrong, can't they? And when they do go wrong, they go a lot more wrong, I'd that say, so than, than, than the average event. Yeah, no, it makes sense. You know? That's crazy. So after the clubs, so you sold the club at this point then? Yep. You've done two more events in another club mm -hmm. in Romford. Now, I'm, I'm just thinking, I can't remember if that was the same year that I had that club or if it was the following year. I'd be able to find out the dates anyway, but yeah, it was called Hush. People yeah. would be able to remember it. I'm trying to think where it was. It's like a... I'm sure it was out near the market. You know where the market yeah, was, yeah, yeah. and there's like a square, yeah. and it was down in 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 the in the right hand corner. Yeah, so that's behind the brewery. If if I if I'm thinking where you're thinking, that's behind the brewery. Yeah, the main shopping center. Between they got two shopping centers, one main one, and one smaller one, and it's like there's a market in between, and there's yeah. like different alleyways off off the back of that. So maybe it might be somewhere around there. Yeah, because to be honest, it actually slipped my mind that I had that club. Because I didn't want a club, but if I could open a club, just and it was a perfect timing, you know, because mm. you got Christmas and New Year's, you could make a, uh, um, you could make it, you could make a small pound note that time of year, especially with the events that I was doing, and I also learned my lesson that you know, 
normal parties or promoting normal events is, is, is not for me. Or at that time, it wasn't. So what keeps you driven then? What makes you want to do business? This episode is sponsored by Sun & Musk, the UK's leading fragrance brand specialising in oods and musks. They have some of the longest lasting perfumes you can try and with over 20 locations you can certainly smell it for yourself. And you can also check out Sun & Musk online by visiting www.sunandmusk.com and checking out the wide range that they have to offer. I personally use Abed Ombre but I'm sure you'll find a perfume that fits you. So make sure you come down to a Sun & Musk store or check out the website using the link in the description. Well, Back then and now. Um, I've always been on I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I enjoy earning money. Mm -hmm. I, I, like I said earlier on, I, it's like a drug to me. I enjoy earning money. Whether it may be £10 or whether it may be £10,000, I enjoy earning money. Yeah. Uh, it keeps me active. Uh, it, it keeps me sharp. You know, I love being able to talk about something or understand in the market. It's, 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 it's a great feeling. Um, and all, on top of that, I want the best in life. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I don't want to be the weak link in, 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 in the generation or, or through the generations, the, the weak link that stops working. I want it to carry on uh, forever. I want, listen, inshallah, I do have children. Inshallah. I want them to I want them to be just as motivated just and as driven as me. So where do you think you got it from? Do you think you got it from your dad, obviously? Well, my dad is, is, is my role model, of course, and he's done very well. And, you know... It doesn't bother me at all, and don't don't think that it does. That you know, but keep being mentioned as Alfie Best Son still niggles you a little bit, because I'm my own man. I've done a lot by myself, everything myself. Now I'm not saying it upsets me, because it doesn't. I want to see my dad get to twenty billion. Yeah, of course I do. I'd, I'd help him do it. Anything I could do in my power to help him get there, I would do. But at the same time, that is also something that drives me forward. That I want to be my own man, and I, I don't. I do not want to be known. Listen, anybody can say, "Yeah, okay, it's Alfie best son." And there's nobody that can take away what I've done. It's, 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 it's been See, proven, not said. This is one of the main things I wanted to speak to you about, yeah, because the, the people I've had on the podcast, for example, yourself, Aleem, Mikey, who have well of fathers who are known as well, there will always be an attachment of you know daddy's money sort of thing, right? You know, Aleem gets it all the time, but you could argue that he's been the face and marketing behind the whole mm. of his business of Platinum Executive Travel, yeah? Same with Mikey. You can add different new, younger generation elements into the business that his dad may not know of. Mm. So there's always new elements where you take it to different heights and, and you know, you deserve your respect in your own ways. Like, yeah, fair enough, you're like, dad's maybe well off, but there's definitely things that you guys have done in your life to get you far, further. And by the time you get to that age, probably may even be even further than where they are right now. Well, I'm further forward than he was when he was my age. Yeah. A lot further forward. So how old are you now? 25. Okay, so when he was 25 as well, you're further than... Yeah, uh, yeah, he never got his first mobile home park till he was... How old I am now? 25. I got mine when I was 17. When you got yours at 17, yeah. So when you got yours at 17 and he got his at 25, did you have a conversation with him at all? Yeah, but he... he, he financially, he never helped. Yeah. But he put me in the direction of where it was. Now, they're not easy to find, but obviously because he's in the industry, they're a lot easier for him to find than the average person, yeah. i.e. me. Yeah, of course. And yeah. But everything that I have done, my business, I not that I don't have nothing to do with that because I do, but not financially or business-wise. Every business I've ever run or done or every, every idea has been down Yours. to me. Yeah. But not even that in that sense financially. But like for example, him buying his first his first place at twenty five, yep. you buying yours at seventeen. Did you be like, "Ha, huh, Dad, I beat you to it"? Ah, oh, listen, we laugh and joke about it, but it's a healthy competition, you know. Yeah, it's of like, course. It, yeah. Listen, I'm his son. I should hope he wants me to do extremely well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You need healthy competition. Who else do you have healthy competition with besides from your dad? Like um, you surround yourself with people that keep you motivated, driven, and like having to one up. Your friends, but in a friendly way, obviously. Um, do you know what? When you when you say it like that, not not really. I, my friends have got to have benefits to me. Mm -hmm. Not 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 that it's a competition because I want to see them go further. Yeah, of course. I want to see myself go far, and everybody around me. I wish all the success upon. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But like I say, if they're not a benefit to me, then they're a hindrance. And, in the, and I'm in a position to be able to make that choice. Now, it might sound extremely horrible and I will help anybody as much as I possibly can. But in this life, we need help. I don't need hindrances. I need to move forward. Yeah. And if we're not, if we haven't got the same mentality or if we haven't got the same mentality or goals, 
It's uh, not not exactly the same goals, but you know, striving in the same direction. It's it's, it's hard for me to make a relationship with someone like that. After the parties, what did you do then? After the whole clubbing thing, you I bought, bought a mobile home park. Bought the mobile home park, mm -hmm. and you had that for how long? You still got it, obviously, right? Still got, I still got it, and then I bought another one after that. So, but the thing is that that never really. Um, so, were you doing anything on the side as well as having the the home park? I was buying and selling a few vans. Okay, yeah, still at doing the that time then. and still doing my my cold calling, which slowed down, which slowed down a, a, um, a fair bit, to be honest. And then I uh, I started doing drains as well. Drains. I, had, I had drains. I had a drainage company called Blockbuster Drainage. Blockbuster Drainage, yeah. Mm. Okay, what did you think of that idea? And I also done um, because it's, um, it's it's like a recession-proof business. Like you, you need to go to the toilet. Yeah. And that's that's the way that I see it. And my dad also done drains when he was younger and said, right, because I was actually a little bit lost at this time after all the clubs had gone, the sites, they don't run their self. They need managing, but not Monday to Sunday mm -hmm. or Monday to Friday. Like my working week's Monday to Sunday. Yeah. You know, to other people, maybe it's Monday to Friday. But in any case, um, it still needs managing, but it's it, it doesn't take full time. Uh, so I was a little bit lost at this stage and I wanted to find something to do. And in between this, I used to do garden shows at the XL with, with a friend of mine um, at the XL, at the XL, uh, the Olympia. We used to like go and set up uh, teak garden furniture and, and, and sell it on a stand. Mm -hmm. And that was just done on the side, yeah? Well, you say on the side. While I'm doing these, these are my full-time job. But obviously, garden furniture is seasonal. So you can't be doing it all the time. Well, you, yeah. well, you, well, if you want to, you can try and do it in the winter. But it's not going to be, it's not going to be the best job financially, is it? Yeah, and there's other going, jobs you can do in, during the winter. Yeah, just going back to the maintenance of the of the of the homes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's residential, then I'm sure the people who are living there taking care of it as well, because you know, if they're living there, that's their home at, at that yeah, time. Yeah, of isn't course. It? But so to an aspect, they're they're, they're in charge of their plot. Yeah. There is it, yeah. still a site around it, i.e. the roads, yeah, yeah, trees. Yeah, oh, you've got to take over, of course, yeah. I exactly. And it's more the development side of things. But after it's been developed, yeah. there's, there's um, you've got to keep the, uh, the, the site clean. And there's, there's a small amount that needs doing, but not that would take you, um, t take seven days of the week up. And I, I have to be busy. Yeah. I'm going to throw a little random question here, yeah? Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest attribute to someone's success? Like what sort of elements in your me life? per for me I can only speak for myself I don't know about other people I don't know what other people's formula is yeah. I like to pick people's brains and ask them that question myself but for me it's just been determination because I'm yeah. not academically clever at all intelligence has definitely not got me where I am today nor me dad but intelligence and business may not be you know paper but and I didn't grades. start I didn't I didn't start off intelligent in business. Yeah, but no one does. You know, when when someone's going to a business and they haven't done a business before, no one no one starts off intelligent. You learn as you go on. Exactly. So it's determination, yeah. hard work, and determination and persistence. Yeah. And not being bothered about the rejection and like being able to handle rejection. I learned that from a very young age. Now, that was a hard thing for me to do. Why? Because it's not very nice, is it? As a kid, like being. Uh, it's hard for me to explain, but you know, to be rejected, I'm sure have you ever reached out for someone to do a podcast yeah, and they say yeah, no, yeah. it's not the nicest feeling yeah, in no, the world, is it? Not. You know, it, it would probably make you not want to ask the next person or a little bit cautious yeah, of asking yeah, yeah. the next person or only ask someone that you know is going to say yes. Yeah, of course, yeah, 100%. Yeah, one of them ones. So if you do that throughout your life with everything, then you're you're going to lose a lot of opportunities. And off the back of that, with you having that, do you think you'd lost any opportunities along the way? No, because I didn't never let that bother me. Mm. The way I looked at it, you knock on ten doors, one's going to open. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's the same way. You know, if I do a podcast, I reach out to ten people. Eventually, one's going to come on. One's going to come on. Yeah, that's the way you got to do it, isn't it? What's it like doing business with family then? I don't really do business with family. Not at all. No. Haven't you, you and your dad got any joint ventures together or anything like that? No, I'm trying to think if we have in the past. But you share ideas. If you don't have physical businesses together, you must share ideas. You know, being father and son, you must share ideas and. Oh, we talk a lot, and I ask his advice. He sometimes asks my advice. You know, his way is always the right way. It's, it's difficult, As you know, and, are, and, yeah. and it's hard not to take his advice because of where he's at in life. Yeah. But he can also be wrong. You know, like I said. You know about you know father and son relationships and yeah. and and the wealth involved, right? 
What would you say you add to the Alfie best name? <sighs> you know, as I said, like for example, Liam will do the marketing. For me, Dad, not a lot. No, so I don't have nothing to do with his business. No, you don't have anything to do with the business. But for example, if I say Alfie Vest, yeah, because because you both have the same same name, right? Mm -hmm. Junior or senior. What do you add to the Alfie Best name? Like, what sort of values? Would well, you I'm say? the next generation. I'm younger, <laughs> yeah. determined, and I'm ready to take whatever to the next level. Now, I don't sit and wait and think, oh, I'm going to inherit X amount. Mm. What's mine's mine, and I'm looking to add to that. Yeah, you have to, isn't it? But you want to keep building it. generational oh, wealth. Oh, that's exactly what I want. Mm. I, like I said to you before, I don't want to be the weak link. Your car collection has been crazy. I remember you had a Bugatti Veyron, right? No, it was my dad's. What were the six by six? Dad. Dad's as well. Okay, so... What sort of things have you purchased that have been like crazy amount? Or watches. It's my job. I bought what? some lovely watches. I've had a Ferrari F8. I've had a Ferrari Portofino. I've had a Ferrari California T. But these was all cars just to enjoy myself. Because at the time, yeah. they was my goal. Yeah. So now this, I think beyond cars. So this is this is my question to it, yeah? So when you acquire something like that, when you buy something like that, yeah. is it because you think, all right, I can afford this, let me go buy it? Or do you have to set an achievement in place first smash through that goal and be like okay once I do this then I could buy this no I set my eyes on that mm -hmm. and then I look to achieve it like I say that was my goal yeah before cars was my goals that's what I worked for now yeah. I've got a little bit older I'm thinking to myself you know I'm kind of done with this yeah, but yeah. I like to have a nice car and if I can find one cheap enough I'll buy it yeah then it's nice to have a nice car, look presentable again. And I've done it since I've been very young. But that they was my goals. Like, I'd work to achieve that. Well, like you said, you know, you um, are driving a V-Class right now, aren't it? Yes. And you got rid of the driver because, why? Expenses. Need to yeah. save the money. Yeah. Money can be put, put put to work in other places. And I'm not saying I won't get a driver. I won't have a nice car ever again. I, to be honest, I've got a, a, a Vogue coming in March. Mm -hmm. What, a fresh one? Yeah, yeah, and which again, I'm I'm working towards uh, 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 save the money for it, and like I say, it, them things push me further forward, and I might just be justifying it for myself, but I believe that they push me forward to look like okay, I've worked this hard, look at me now. Mm -hmm. So what do you do on a daily basis then, Arthur? Aside, I buy and sell watches. Aside from buy and sell watches, what else? I buy and sell watches. I buy and sell tickets for events, and I've just started back boxing, and I keep up my prayers. Mashallah. Let's talk about that. As you mentioned the prayers, right? I don't want to... Um, you've mentioned it on quite a few podcasts, your mm -hmm. reversion to Islam, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I will we'll touch over basically like what happened sort of thing. And I'm going to relate it to business as well. So tell us, like, how did the whole reversion of Islam happen? This episode is sponsored by Chaiwala. If you don't already know, Chaiwala specializes in garlic chai and Indian street food. With over 70 locations, six in Canada, and a new brand new store in Dubai, chances are you definitely have a store near you. They have a wide variety of food and snacks on the menu, so chances are you'll definitely have something that fits your taste buds. My personal favorite, definitely the Desi breakfast and a nice garlic chai to go alongside it. So make sure you come down to Chaiwala, try the Indian street food, and grab yourself a nice warm garlic chai to enjoy this episode of CEO Cost. Completely unexpected. Never ever did I think in my life would I ever become a Muslim or would I ever become religious even. Mm -hmm. I was out with my friend, his name's Danny, Danny Dean. Um, another uh, jeweler, buys and sells watches in Hatton Garden. We was out in my dad's helicopter yep. for the day. And, uh, um, yeah, Aston Martin helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We was out because he, he was on my case. I oh, take this one out, you take that one out, you won't take me out. I said, come on, right, no problem, we'll go. I've managed to organise it, rung with dad, right, let's take it out. We ends up going to Cornwall and coming back. He said, right, I've got to be back at a certain amount of time because my mum's going to take her shahada. Well, we was all together anyway. I said, well, go on, we'll all come. You know, mm -hmm. ain't a problem, is it? No, no problem, because I didn't understand it. Yeah. So I've got in there and I genuinely felt something in the mosque that I've never felt anywhere. Anywhere at all. So I thought, I'm right. And, and the thoughts that I was having was amazing. Like, imagine having God behind you. That was the sort of thing I was thinking. Now, to go into detail would, would, would be difficult for me now, but it was something yeah. that I haven't experienced ever. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I looked at uh, my friend Daniel. I said, like, wow, like, I can't believe what's just happened to me. Do you know what I mean? He said, like, get me a Quran and let me read it and then every page I was just felt 
it was so relatable and I was so compatible with what was in the Quran. I said, I think I want to take my Shahada. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to read it again. I read it again, started talking about it. And then I looked and thought, what a beautiful community, what a beautiful and simple religion. And this can help me in this life and the next. So I thought, it's a no brainer. So at the point when you first went into the mosque when your friend's mum was taking in Shahada. Her Shahada, yeah. To her Shahada, to you, know, you actually taking your Shahada. Mm. What was that time? How long was that? Six weeks. So you read the whole Quran in that six weeks? Twice. Twice. And then you decided, what made you actually decide? Because there's one thing seeking knowledge and reading the Holy Book of Islam. And then there's one thing of like, do you know what? I want to join this. So was there a tick, ticking moment that made you actually want to become a Muslim? Yeah, that, that, the, that, that feeling that I got in the mosque and anything else only God can answer. Yeah, yeah, fair play. And this is where I want to revert it back to, yeah? And how I want to revert it to business. A lot of people that I speak to, whether they're Muslim or you know, whether they follow a religion, they, they conduct business in almost like a different type of way. So I want to ask, has your, help, have you, has your reversion to Islam made you conduct business or yourself in a different way as to before? If I had to give an example, you know, owning a nightclub in Islam, you probably couldn't do that because you know, it involves parties and whatnot. So has it made you think about conducting business in a different way as compatible? Um, Not to say that you're doing anything anyway that was against Islam, but like just listen, has it made you think? I'm only a student. I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. Be aware, I will probably make loads of mistakes yep. and I will hold my hands up to every single one I'm not perfect only God is perfect as you well know mm-hmm. and like I say I will make mistakes and thankfully I will try to make them as minimal and as less as possible because I've got some very good people around me to point and steer me in the right direction of course and my intentions are extremely good I feel it in my heart mm-hmm. that's the main thing you know, I feel it like if I do make a mistake or I do do something wrong, I do feel it in my heart. Now, that's what I never really had that before. Not but now all. I'm conscious yeah. of doing something wrong, yeah. which makes me feel like, you know, it's, 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 it's powerful stuff. No, so, it's very difficult for me to explain what's inside, but um, not not really obviously there's there, there's rules and guidelines and i will do my utmost best to stick to them now that's what matters mm-hmm. of course yes. i'm only a student in the religion but i will do my best to learn as much as i can and be the best muslim i can you know you get you hit the nail on the head with that with that answer you know you can't ask for anything different other than what no. you just said exactly that and also on that note as well i spoke to i got i've got quite a few revert mates mm-hmm. right and when they revert they they want to they they say islam is the truth so they want to revert the people around them as well have you ever had the conversation with your dad or how do you think he'd take it would you want to revert your dad like your friends say i'd like to revert everybody Mm -hmm. because i believe it's the truth of course i believe it's the path of righteousness and i believe it can help everybody in areas they wouldn't believe. Yeah. But, you know. Um, All in God's timing, basically. Like, Listen, if it's meant to be, it will be. Yeah. Me, I'm very grateful that the religion was brought to me mm-hmm. and I accepted it and God's made my path extremely easy. He has. You know, I've had a little bit of backlash, what I expected. But from every Muslim brother, Who all I've had is from? love. You know, there's been a few trolls on on social media. I'm sure, I'm sure you get it yourself. You know, racist people, bored racist people, yeah. people that have got nothing in their life apart from you know, or, or or people that maybe dislikes me anyway. Now they've got another reason to not like to you. To, to point the finger and call names. Yeah, which ne- never really has bothered me because again, like I say, I I try my best to be a good person, and I wasn't a bad person before. And uh, do you know what? I said to my dad on, on a podcast previously, because we did, you know, the Muslim thing uh, uh, um, came well, up. It came up. And um, to cut a long story short, we was getting asked questions to and fro. And I said to my dad, Dad, like, what do you think? Do you think it's made me a better person? 
And he stopped and he went, I don't think it's made you a better person, which is not an insult because I, d I don't believe I was a bad person. Yeah. I wasn't a bad person. I'm definitely now, I would say I'm definitely a better person, like yeah. personally. Yeah. But he said, no, but what I would say is enhanced you as a person, which I think was 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 a great way of saying, of it. saying it. Yeah. Because it has. Yeah. It's made me want to do better, made me enjoy doing better things. When you have kids eventually, will you bring them up with Islam? Well, of course. Yeah. Of course. You know, I wouldn't want to restrict them. And listen, if they got older, I would leave my kids to do what they wanted. But I would try and direct them down the Islamic path. Yeah. Because it's helped me. It does help me on a day-to-day -day basis. Every single day that I wake up. You know, before I, I used to like, to get up and pray Fajr is a beautiful thing. I feel good all day. It's made me appreciate what I have got and still want more. But if I don't get it, I'm happy with what I've got. I'm appreci I appreciate having air in my lungs and being alive. Now, I've never felt like that in my whole life. So you don't think of it like that, do you? No, but now I do. Yeah. How long have you been Muslim for now? Uh, since September would 2022. You, would you say it's almost felt like a rebirth? Um, I wouldn't say so much a rebirth. Um, it you know it, it doesn't it, it feels like I've had my eyes covered, you know. Like I feel so like I, I, I can't I can't even I can't I genuinely it's such a hard feeling for me to explain. Um, I just feel better. I want to do more. Everything seems easy. When something don't go right, I don't feel so bad. I'm not so harsh on myself. Mm. You know, I look tomorrow's another day. If I wake up tomorrow, great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know. Yeah. Like what? What? I, I'm just so grateful for what I've got now. I'm, I'm still dry, striving and pushing to get more. But regardless, I'm happy with what I've got. I'm so appreciative of what I've got. And before I wasn't. Mm. Before I was like, oh, why ain't I here? Why ain't I there? Why won't this go right? Why won't that go right? You know. Now I'm looking. I'll oh, thank, thank God I'm alive, and thank God my family's healthy. Alhamdulillah. Thank God I'm here on your podcast. <laughs> Alhamdulillah for that you one. Know? <laughs> no, I get what you're saying, man. That's what I'm saying. You're grateful about everything. When when you have Islam in your heart, you're grateful about everything. Anything that goes wrong, you're like, Alhamdulillah. Anything that goes right, you're like, Alhamdulillah. You're grateful exactly. for it all. Exactly. I want to go back to business, right? Um, you're my age. Mm -hmm. How do you plan out your life? Like, what when you take up on business, obviously you're going to carry on buying and selling watches. You're going to do deals here and there whenever you can. That's what you do. Mm hmm is there a plan set in stone for becoming the billionaire yourself? Do you have like step-by-step -step plan of when I'm 30, I need to do this, 35, <sighs> I need to do this? Not, not so much, not so much as that. I have a formula, which is earn money, save money, invest it into property. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said earlier on, there's, there's several avenues you can go down with that property. Mm -hmm. And that's something I know, it's something I understand that it's a formula that works for, for many generations four generations and I'm yeah, sure it's going to continue for, working ex ex exactly yeah and like I say I'm not the cleverest person in the world mm. it's hard for me and with that it's just guaranteed to work you know because I could go and put my time into a business now which might not take off so I've put all my time put a small amount of money in or a big amount of money or whatever it may be but like I've said on other podcasts my time's worth money I'd rather be in putting my time to use, which I know is going to work, than something that's a 50-50. Yeah, of course, 100%. When you have kids, mm -hmm. so, okay, so you know when, when you left school? Yeah. That was your decision, right? Or? Um, I just wasn't learning anything. It was like, you know, I'm sure we all come to the agreement. I'm, I'm actually quite sure my dad wanted me to stay in for a little bit longer. But I just wasn't learning anything. I wasn't interested and the thing is, if I'm not interested in something, then I was unwilling to learn. So when you say now that you know you're not so educated on that, yep. do you regret leaving school? No. Not at all? Not at all. Why not? Because look where I am. But retrospectively, you could look at it like would have got a lot more education because you left at 12 years old, which is uh, how old? What, what year is 12 years old? Year seven? Year yeah, so I've done one year in year seven. Oh, you've done one year in year one seven? One year in year seven. Yeah, so then, you, you know, you got your whole GCSEs in front of you, yeah. you've got your whole A-levels or college and all that sort of stuff, where you can learn a whole lot more in that sense, right? But what about what I learned on the streets, real life lessons? Then I wouldn't have had that, I'd have had GCSEs. 
Mm. I hope that I was going to get a good job somewhere yeah. on a fixed wage. What you get every year, that's what you're getting. Mm. Nine to five, making somebody else rich. Now, I don't. anybody that gets up in the morning and goes to work, I take my hat off to. But that's not for me. So then I'd ask you, when you have kids, mm -hmm. would you want them to stay in school or how would it all work with that? If, you, if your son or your daughter came to you and said, Dad, I want to leave school and it's the second day of year seven, what would you say? I would get them homeschooling. From because day one? It, yeah, a couple of days a week because there is, there is, there is, there has been times where I thought, oh, do you know what I mean? Like, That's what I'm saying. I could have done with a little bit of education, but not that it's ever held me back. Because mm. you know what is The education system is completely different now. Like, I'd probably get my, my kids homeschooled as well, based on the fact that the schools are teaching, you know. In my opinion, <laughs> the education system is all wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's all wrong. It's not setting you up for life. No. At all. It's setting you up to be uh, a modern day slave, well, essentially. So it's setting you up to get exams, to go and get a job, to get a fixed wage every every month or every year. When and in reality, that that not even you have to go to university or college to go and get a, yeah. a good degree. Which is or, then putting or, you in debt. Well, putting you in debt and listen again. Take the money out of the equation. Think of the time mm -hmm. you're then starting work when you're 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you want to be rich by your thirty or when you when you're thirty five. It's impossible. Yeah, it's unlikely, isn't it? And you've got to live on top of this. Mm. And it's all good saying Yara get sixty thousand pound a year uh, 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 wage, but you've got to live off that. How much would it cost you to live? Yeah, exactly. After tax, and if you've got um, if got if you've got people depending on you as well, then you can write that if even more. Exactly. It's crazy. But no, the education systems, in my opinion, is is completely different, and I don't want my kid to learn all about entrepreneurship and you know try and dive down the depths of trying to find what he wants to do in, in terms of his life or, or her life well you've got you listen when i have children i will leave a lot a lot up to them i'll try and guide them and point them in, in the right direction as best as i can and i'd imagine this and i haven't got any children yet but inshallah i do i I'm want sure children um you want children yeah yeah of course i'd like to have a big family why um, is that because it's just a dumb thing. I want, you to know, I build want the legacy, sons continue to, to, the legacy. To, to, to the legacy to go further forward. Because unfortunately, we're all on the same clock. Or, or I don't know if it's unfortunately or fortunately, we're all on the same clock. And uh, uh, one day, you know, our time's going to be up. Mm. And then it's for the next generation yeah, to, to, to pull it further forward. What do you want to accomplish as you're on this earth? Another way I could ask this question is everyone who I speak to you almost has like a retirement figure. Yeah. I will never retire, ever. Never retire? I'll never retire. But what would be your ideal figure where you're like, that's nice? Um. If you could, you know, open your online banking in 50 years time, 60 years time, and see that figure, and it's like, you know, Alfie, you've done all right for your whole life. I'd, That's I'd, solid. I'd, I'd never open my online bank and see that figure because it's always out working for me. I've never, ever, ever got... Okay, let's know, let's imagine funds. all of your assets all into one place here. Yeah? What, like... Yeah, it's hard to ask someone who will never retire. You're always constantly on the go doing deals. and I think you're to always honest, like it's that, the, it's it? the lifestyle that I'm looking to achieve more so than the figure. Or, you know, I want to be in the private jets. I mm. want to be... Just, at the minute, I'd... I'd it's hard for me to say because some people look at it completely different. I don't call myself free. Mm. I'm a slave to my own self. Now, I can't just drop whatever I'm doing yeah. and then and, and go running and go on whatever holidays I want. I'd like to be able to do that, you know, up and down private jets, big boats, you know, when money ain't a problem for me at the minute it is. Do you think, you know, growing up around wealth and as you've grown up, you're, you know, you've only got more wealthier, right? From yourself and your father. Obviously, um, do you still live with your father now? No. No? When did you like move, move out on your own? 21. Okay, so up until that point, you had seen his wealth around you, essentially, right? He's always been another person to keep investing. He hasn't, you know, you could say he was probably the poorest rich man you've ever seen because he wasn't interested in the lifestyle. All he was interested in was making more money. Point, point I'm trying to get to is this. With with that, do you feel like it damages the hunger that you have sometimes? 
No, not at all. No. I, like I say, the proof is where I'm at today. Mm. And you've done it all yourself. So people can't even say that is money or anything like that because everything you've done is all been it's your there, own moves. It's, it's there. It's not said. It's proven. Yeah. It's proven. There's, it goes way back. If they want to do their research and look, yeah, it's and all look there. further back, it's all there for them for themselves to see. What sort of message that you'd want to leave out for, you know, people watching this podcast, people listen to it? Um, if there was a message that I could leave out for anybody, it would be definitely don't give up. Persistence and determination will get you where you want to go. Listen, mm. don't get disheartened. Listen, if you quit, it's never going to happen. Yeah. And you'll never know. I'd, ra- I'd, ra- I'd rather live knowing that I tried and I didn't do it than I did not do it at all. 100%. Any last messages from Alfie? Thank you very much for having me on the podcast. And I, it's already a success, but I wish it even further forward. Inshallah. I wish to get your dad on soon. So maybe we can do something like that because it'll, obviously we can be two completely different stories, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be good. So if people want to see that, do let me know and drop a like or something like that and we can make it happen. But Alfie, what's the watch you're wearing as well, actually? That's beautiful. Stainless steel. Halal. You know? Halal. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know about them ones, yeah, the gold yeah, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Stainless steel skeleton. Has that changed at all? Uh, what? S- since you've been Muslim, have you stopped wearing gold? Yes. Yeah. Of course. I'd like I say to you, I want to be the best Muslim that I possibly can, you know. So your gold watches, what, what have you done? Oh, obviously you're buying them away. Yeah. I buy them and sell them, but I do not wear them anymore. Seriously? No, I like, do not wear them anymore. That's crazy. Stainless steel or platinum. Stainless steel or platinum. I did not. You know what? Credit to you, bro, because there's a lot of people. Uh, you know, I'm not going to expose anyone's sins or anything like that. Yeah, but, but yeah. I'm, listen, I believe I'm a role model. I've got a lot of eyes on me. Do so you ever feel pressure in that sense then? Not at all, because I'm doing my best. That's yeah. an easy thing for me to do, not wear gold. But do you, yeah, no, in that aspect, yeah. But in other ways, do you feel like, you know, you have eyes on you? Do you feel like the people watching you, do you I ever do feel pressure? I do not feel any pressure whatsoever because I know my intentions are pure and 100%. Now, I can't do no more than my best. Now, f- Islam aside, I'm just talking about life in general. Oh. Same. Yeah. I, I know I will do my best at whatever I'm doing. If that ain't good enough for somebody, then I'm extremely sorry, but I've done my best. Anybody in this world can only do their best. Yeah, of course. That's it. That's all they can do. Sometimes their best can be plenty good enough. Sometimes it don't cut cloth, but... You've done your best. You've done your best. What more can you ask from someone? Listen, some people say they've done their best and then maybe didn't, you know, but I know deep down I've done my best. There you hear it from Alfie Best himself. That's it. Yeah. Alfie, appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thanks for Inshallah, we'll do another one soon in the future or whatnot, whenever you're ready. And uh, we'll get it cracking. 100%. Yeah. For everyone watching this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you're listening to this Apple podcast or Spotify, make sure you leave a review. And until then, I'll catch you lot on the next episode next Sunday of CEO Cast. Maybe we'll get Alfie's dad on. Maybe he'll be the next episode if you get 10,000 likes. How about that? <laughs> Peace.